part three to explore how when her husband Frederick was due to take the throne due to his father aging to the ripe age of 90 and becoming increasingly frail, they plotted to exile her to Britain with a threat of executing her if she returned. The plan was to put their son Wilhelm on the throne instead, but this never went ahead because something much more tragic happened instead. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Vicky's husband Frederick came close to his rightful throne, but his health took a turn for the worse. He was suffering with his throat and eventually he could barely talk at all. The doctors did diagnose him with a non-cancerous tumour and encouraged him to have surgery to remove it. Despite this medical advice, the pair refused any treatment for him, which caused outrage among the children. Wilhelm travelled to see them and he accused his mother of being happy that Frederick was so gravely ill. No matter how much the children tried to convince them, the royal couple refused all treatment and this led to one of the most bizarre circumstances in Germany history. Vicky became the shadow empress. Frederick's father died on the 9th of March 1888 and he appointed Vicky and Frederick as emperor and empress. They were shadow roles as they were expected to be replaced very soon due to the condition that Frederick was in and so Wilhelm would take the throne anyway. Just before she gave up her empress role, she took on a secret mission. She was a smart girl and had always been smart enough to suss out the situation. She wanted to protect herself and her legacy and so she hid three boxes of personal documents in Windsor Castle in England. Her hope was to stop her enemies from gaining access to the information and she was right to do this. The couple ruled as shadow rulers for only 99 days when Frederick died on the 15th of June 1888, only months after his father's death. He passed the baton to his son Wilhelm, who immediately betrayed his mother by invading her privacy. He ordered for his parents' residence to be ransacked by soldiers to try and find information that would be incriminating. Nothing was found due to Vicky's quick and pre-thinking she knew her son would waste no time in betraying her once he had the throne. Vicky was now merely a doja empress and Wilhelm ensured his mother knew that she was no longer in charge and that she had been demoted. He punished his mother in other ways once he could find no incriminating evidence against her. He banished her from the palace and tried to exclude her from society he signed her up to take on traditional doja duties by becoming a patron of the German Red Cross. Vicky did not take this treatment lying down and she got her revenge on her son through her words. Wilhelm once wrote in a guest book during his international travels, the will of the king is the supreme law. Vicky mocked her son in an attempt to humiliate him when she sneered, the Tsar, an infallible pope, a Bourbon, or our poor Charles I might have pronounced that phrase, but a monarch of the 19th century. By 1988, Vicky was suffering from her own poor health as she was suffering from terminal breast cancer. She had one final desire and dying wish. She did not want her son to use her private letters against her, and so she again smuggled them to England. There was good reason to hide these letters due to some of the cruel words she had remarked about her own son. In one letter she wrote to her parents when Wilhelm was young. Vicky confessed. He is really smart for his age. If only he didn't have that unfortunate arm, I would be so proud of him. Victoria devoted part of her final years to painting and to visit the artist colony of Kronberg. In her last days she used to walk in the morning and spend long hours writing letters or reading in the library of her castle. The cancer she was suffering with was inoperable 
and it forced her to stay in bed for long periods of time. The cancer had spread to her spine by the autumn of 1900. The Empress Doja died on the 5th of August 1901, less than seven months after the death of her mother. She was buried next to her husband in the Royal Mausoleum at Potsdam on the 13th of August 1901. Her tomb has a recumbent marble effigy of herself on top. Her two sons who died in childhood, Sigismund and Waldemar, are buried in the same mausoleum. In the end, Wilhelm really should have listened to his mother after decades of autocratic rule and the outbreak of World War I. Wilhelm was the last Emperor of Germany. In 1918, he lost all support and power, and he had to flee to the Netherlands. Yet, Wilhelm finally found out that the will of the king was not supreme law. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories, and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.